Hi guys, SC Dawa has graced us with another silly edition of Dawa trying to spread the Islam virus. And this time it's in Speaker's Corner, two Muslim apologists for the price of one, which is nothing actually. Well, and the level is not any better either. This I'll tell you up front from what I've heard so far. I'll, I'll just roll the video and provide a comment on what I hear. But come on, to be fair, they are fighting a losing battle, trying to spread falsehood and doubt when the internet is providing more and more tangible and reliable information on Islam and claims Islam apologists make. And we have the situation now where those with experience and knowledge regarding Islam and the associated claims are speaking up and countering these false claims, replacing fakes with facts. Now it starts in the middle of something, so we can't really evaluate what is going on until well into the video. So this entire beginning is yes, if, um, pointless. Conflation remarks, you conflated a lot of things. No, I haven't. Well, then have there's no discussion. Of, have then. Okay. Have you ever heard of a guy called Mohammed Dido? Um, because I said you have, and you said you haven't. Have you then the discussion. Of, have you heard of Mohammed Dido? I think I think the discussion is over already, isn't it? Because no, you're no, not no, willing no, to engage no, with. No, you've made some statements. Somewhere else, but I, yeah, you've made some statements I which I disagreed. See, right? I was at London Bridge yesterday. Okay, and I don't want to see my children blown up by Neither do I. Islamic terrorists I'm in not, this country because I think I think you're again. They misinterpret Islam. Okay, I work for. A lot of peace in the Middle East. I was in Iran, I've been to Egypt, I've seen what's happening. What were you doing in London Bridge? Huh? What were you doing in London Bridge? I was Bridge? taking a walk down there. And what did you see? I, I didn't actually, fortunately, it started raining, so I actually took the tube instead. But so, would, so basically, you weren't there. Fair enough. But, but, I, I but was, no, no, the way you're presenting it, if, if you were there, you weren't if, there. If, uh, okay. <laughs> okay, so the non Muslim is saying that the Muslims generally misinterpret Islam. Well, they have no choice. So, yes, I, if, I agree. But then he says he's been to the Middle East and the Muslim guy, I think this is Mansour, sorry, asked why he was on London Bridge, which is totally irrelevant, but shows the non-Muslim making up a scenario to suit his purpose, something that can backfire. And yeah, here it does. He is caught lying. If I was there, I would... Regardless, I was, I, you weren't there. But, so when you made a statement, you were there. Excuse me. Thankfully, I wasn't there. No, thankfully please, please, please. Wasn't. So your approach from the very beginning doesn't seem to be very I honest. And no, my approach was totally honest. No, no. You came and said, I was there, and I, I wanted to know more about it, because I want, area, to, I want okay? to be with you, united with you. Okay, but obviously, so you weren't there. So again, we need to come with the right approach. So let me ask but, you, are you prepared to renounce it, jihad as, as a pillar uh, of Islam? Um, Excuse me, I was just trying to um, answer some of the questions you said. I said, you've conflated a lot of things. I'm asking you a question, straightforward question. Are you prepared to put your which, hand, which, hand on the Quran and say, which of the six I, pillars, I which, jihad? Which of the six pillars, one, two, three, four, five, or six, has jihad in it? I'm talking about the sixth pillar of Islam. That's what I'm talking um, about. The sixth pillar of Islam has nothing to do with jihad. Yeah, so, well, which yeah, Islam are you actually, talking about? It does. Where? It is 110 you, verses in the Quran which spe speak about um, violence. Excuse me. I'm what is the about what is this, What is the sixth? The jihadism. That's what I'm talking so? about. Um, you think that is the sixth pillar? Okay. Yeah. What? Okay. Yeah, this is a bit bit funny. Okay. So the the, the non-Muslim asks a question, but Mansur is too scared to go there since the question touches jihad, which is a sensitive topic for Muslims, especially since the question is whether Mansur will renounce violence, which he can't. Now, jihad is a, is a nebulous term and is controversial since it's defined as internal struggle when it comes to a public statement and armed struggle by conservative Muslims in private, citing the hundreds of times it is used there to confront non-believers because it is in the Quran. And there are numerous references in the secondary literature to jihad as lesser and greater with all sorts of weak excuses and no clear statement from Islam scholars or apologists. So we don't really know what jihad is defined as in Islam. It is always left unclear. And somebody like Sheikh Yusuf Karadawi, everybody knows him, I think, and he said almost 20 years ago about areas where non-Muslims live, the area of war, the, the Dar al Harb, it has been determined by Islamic law that the blood and property of people of Dar al Harb is not protected. So 
it's 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 really difficult. It's it's sensitive. It's controversial. And yes, there are countless examples of where jihad is seen as the sixth pillar. There are countless people who sort of declare this to be the case, even though you will not get an official statement by anybody um, that this is actually the sixth pillar. But yeah, some some do and some don't. So we, if we're honest, no, it is not the official sixth pillar. Yes, it is considered by some as being the sixth pillar. And we don't know what jihad actually is because Muslims won't go and decide and will not take a stand either which way. So it's it's just something that remains unclear because they're too much too cowardly to come up with a with a clear sentence and say, okay, yes, we agree, this is what it is. So this is where we stand. Where do you learn your Islam from? Where do you learn your Islam from? Yeah. Okay, so, so seeing he's getting nowhere using data and facts, he just attacks the person. Now, unfortunately, both the, the Muslim and the Muslim, they're, they're all over the show, jumping from topic to topic, making a conversation almost impossible. It's clear that non Muslim knows a lot, but he's in too much of a hurry to get the point across. And that's something I could personally relate to. Now, I have no clue what level of education this Muslim guy has, but he, he can't formulate, I don't know why, he, he simply can't, you know, come up with a, with a coherent argument. And he just gets lost in meaningless babble. No, actually, you're misinformed. Let me ask you a question. Are you going to tell us what Islam is, right? Let me ask you a question. Do you know anything about the Ashtanami? Huh? The Ashtanami. Do you know anything about Ashtanami? Do I know anything about them? No, probably not. Do you know not. anything about the contract of peace that was signed by your prophet with the Christians in the time of his life? Yeah. Do you know anything about it? I do. Do you? Have you seen it? I have seen it. Yeah, and? Your point and, is? And the point is, yes, you're right about one thing. Christians, Jews and Muslims used to live together in peace. But what's happened here is a misinterpretation of Islam in one way. What have it, they misunderstood the, and misinterpreted? Misinterpretation. What yeah? have they misinterpreted? The point is, okay. Excuse me. I'm, Let's in, understand. Okay. We, what do you understand by the word jihad? No. What I, what I, what I want you to now demonstrate yeah. very uh, kindly. Sure. What have those terrorists misunderstood and misinterpreted? Go ahead. Well, what I understand, they, these, these so-called uh, Muslim terrorists, okay, what they have actually misunderstood from, or maybe they haven't misunderstood it. That's my Make point. up your mind. That's the point. If, if Islam, it says that you have the right to defend yourself if your faith is being attacked. Now, oh, some boy. people might say, well, okay, it's being attacked in Syria, therefore I can then bring the, bring, uh, the faith itself. And kill Tom Buck and Harry on the street. The faith and a young girl on the street. This, That's called defense? This is the point. Wait, wait, wait. This wait, is the point. Wait, wait, wait. I'm asking are you, you, are you how saying? Do you, how do you see that? Wait a moment. How do you how, understand look, look. jihad? How do you if, understand look, look. the sixth pillar of Islam? Uh, can you not point you like this fingers, right? Okay, this is rude. Anyway, okay, you've got well, flowers in your hand, signs of peace, but well, the way you're behaving so, obviously well, doesn't demonstrate that. But right. it's actually, I've Good. been working a lot for peace in <laughs> right. the Middle East. Um, much but but your words have. doesn't say anything that. Much okay. more than you have, my friend. Oh. Very good, very good, very good. Thank you. Now. For more than 35 years. Okay, let's okay. understand one thing. If Quran says worship one God and someone worships a monkey, do you think oh, they're misrepresent please. misunderstanding uh, Islamic teaching? Well, obviously. Good. So these people, they never see, they don't know anything about Islam then. Teach them Islam, first of all. Well, I'm and, asking you. Okay, I you just say, told you, you the game, game is over. Yeah. These people, if Quran says worship one God and then people worship a okay. monkey, excuse me. It's not right. okay. If Quran says worship one God and people worship a monkey instead, yeah. then obviously they haven't misunderstood Islam. They haven't understood anything. That's so, right. so if someone comes along and say, oh, denounce Islam based on me worshiping a they're worshiping a monkey, no, you should tell them. I'm asking you, are you prepared to excuse, denounce jihad? Excuse me. Are you prepared to denounce jihad as a Muslim? Are you prepared to denounce your humanism? Oh I'm not man. A are you human? I'm, I'm a human are you a human? I'm not, I'm not a humanist. But do you have human values? Yeah, of course I do. Are you, are you prepared to totally desert them? No. So not. why should a Muslim desert the values of jihad? Tell me why. Okay, I will tell you why. Because are you going to tell me why? Yes, I will. Go ahead. There's a, as you know, there's a greater jihad and there's a lesser jihad, right? And as you know, the Prophet himself said when he was talking about violent jihad, okay, he was saying, 
they asked him, what's the greatest jihad? And he was in, in the context of violent jihad. And his answer in the hadith was actually, if you are in the front line and your horse is killed and you have blood on your own clothing and the, preferably the blood is your own, then you are the greatest warrior of jihad. Okay. In Islamic that is what he said. In Islamic jihad, okay. can you kill an innocent person who is not a combatant? Oh, okay. please. In, in uh, okay. Uh, okay, this is for me, this is like the worst thing. This, this mantra of innocent people. You know, he's unable to address violence. He's unable to make any kind of a commitment here. Um, and then he goes, as though the loss of innocence is equal to a license to getting killed. Pathetic. Come on, why can't you take a stand and say, yes, I am against violence, I renounce all violence, and I think everything in the Quran that points to violence should be aborted, should be just neglected and, and just sort of ignored. He cannot get himself to do that. In his, his, own, in his own words, basically, they, they look at it from the point of view that it's the defense of the faith. I asked you a question. With all respect, no, but you, you actually, I, I want you using, to answer the question. No, it's not with Excuse me. If you look according at, to if you the look Quran, at shaykh, according to the Quran, no, no innocence. listen. According to the Quran and according to the teaching of the Prophet, yeah. can you kill an innocent soul? Okay, in the defense of the faith, there is no innocent soul. No one ever messes with What's the point of talking to someone? You are the one no, no, giving no, 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 to the terrorists. No, no, no. You're actually the one who's pointing fingers now. Yes, I am. I am. What is this? When you're, when actually, you're speaking, you are the one. When you're saying false no, falsities no, 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 no. and then you're trying to push I it on Muslims, that's what's going to happen. No, no, Take no, care no, of yourself. Oh, boy. Uh, come on, Mantra is a fool, all right? I don't know if, <laughs> what he's doing there. He, he does what he just accused the non Muslim of doing and is unable to contain himself misrepresenting what was just happening and what was being said and just being plain irrational. Yeah, man, come on. It can be tough to be confronted with uncomfortable questions when it's your own backward ideology that is being questioned. Yes, but hey, that's your job as determined by Ron. I, uh, I don't know what he's doing. There. Oh, okay. So after six and a half minutes, there's a switch to another Muslim guy who's Hashim, according to the video title. It's always meant for some reason. I don't know. Um, let's let's take a look at I this one. I don't mind dying because I'm. More, do you know what I mean? That's where that thinking comes from. But that's, that's only. I think it's only something that they may feel comfortable saying. But in reality, it's, it's, I don't know. Who knows what they feel? No, no, come on. Anyone, anyone who's been inflicted with pain, is still pain. Physical pain. You feel it. But it's what they feel about the pain. What they think about it. Irrelevant, you're right. Yeah, but honestly, no, it's saying just they're dying, giving their life. Well, what about the victims? Life. How do they get uh, the justice? Yeah. The victims. The, the, victims. The, yes, the ones who are killed, the babies who are killed, the children who are killed. How do they get justice? I mean, if, someone, if you think everything is just an illusion. And, and you go to heaven, is that your justice? You know, you're, missing. No, no, you're, you're missing the point. Look, when someone. Okay, I don't know what the point is. Again, this starts in the middle of something, so I, I don't know why the, the beginning isn't cut out until you get to a point where you can actually um, make out what is being discussed, because here we, we have no idea what is going on. Um, Guys, when someone is killed, that is not the end of it. Yes, That person who died might have a mother, might have a father, a brother, a sister, a family, children. Yes, They cannot just see, let this death be go unpunished without justice being served. This is human nature. Yeah. What you're saying is that just completely ignore all this. No, I'm not and try, saying to do no, no, I'm not saying you personally, but people who say that this is all just an illusion and this is all just spiritual, yeah. one day you're going to die anyway. I mean, to me, they are basically completely divorced from the real world, unfortunately. Okay, what I just heard is him saying that people who just believe that this world is all there is, that they are delusional. Is, is that what I heard? Because, excuse me, there is no justice in Islam. If, if somebody like, like Hitler, I mean, yeah, it's always stupid Nazis that come up after a few minutes, but if somebody like Hitler, like three months before he committed suicide or is killed or died or whatever the case may be, he, he commits atrocities galore and then like a few weeks or months before he dies, he converts to Islam, everything is forgiven and he goes up to heaven. Whereas 
somebody like a, like a normal dentist who doesn't hurt anybody, who helps humans, who who does absolutely nothing wrong all his life, goes to hell because he doesn't believe in this this one God. This is the non-justice in Islam, and to make it anything else is is a bit stupid. I think I think but that is the philosophy. They say that when you reach enlightenment, you realize it's an illusion, so your fear goes away, your fear of death goes away. Oh, what would the justice? I'm telling you. You ask that. You, you I guess you'd ask someone who's. Well, who's you you brought up the points. I'm assuming you know about it. Well, that's what I've read. That's what I've read. That's yeah, what you need to question this. So, I when I read when I read things, I analyze it. Yeah, I do I question, question it. it. I do question it. No, he doesn't question. He's a Muslim. He's not allowed to question it. I mean, we've just been through this. There are countless instances where the Quran is wrong. I have myself not found anything in the Quran that is demonstrably right. And, and yet he says he questions it. If, if, will, will he question uh, slapping a, a, a corpse with a piece of steak and then expecting it to, to get up and talk? Does, does he question this? No, he doesn't. He accepts it. Does he question? that the Quran says it's preserved and, and not changed, and yet we have all these examples of what we do, this exactly has happened. Does he question this? No. Like, like Yasekari said, there's a red line. You don't cross it. You say, well, is this really the case? Well, mm, no, let me not go there. Let me not think about it. Chapter number five, sentence 101. Please apply this. Do not think if the answers might be uncomfortable for you. And that's it. So, uh, and then I come to the conclusion that yes, this is coherent. Oh, oh no, no, no. All right. No, it's not. Me okay, let me just religion, make this a little bit quicker because this is a lot of four. I question it and I don't agree with it. I think you've got to defend yourself. Okay. I'm just saying that it doesn't mean there is that concept no, of the Maya, which is a world's illusion. So when you die, you're not really dying because your soul is. No, but, but the Hindus believe in reincarnation. Yeah. So Hindus believe in reincarnation. Yeah. Unless they're enlightened, in which case they break the cycle. Oh, that's better. Yeah, I mean, that's again a that's philosophy out of Buddhism. No, no, it's the same in Hindus. Yeah, because it's they have the reincarnation and. Unless you're enlightened, like then you break the cycle. I think the Sikhs have it as well. The who? The Sikhs? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, they, they believe in enlightenment as well. They believe in Yeah, they believe in Muslims. What's up with the Hindus? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the others are just basically a. What is a manifestation? Yeah, I don't know. So, I mean, I don't believe in this illusion thing. I don't believe in this reincarnation either. Right. Like, I want to ask this question. Well, you're a Muslim, obviously. You know, different beliefs. Yeah, but like I said, I, I question. Uh, even in Islam, even in uh, Hinduism, when I see something, I question it, I analyze it, and I question it. So, if they tell me no, that, okay, my karma has basically, because it's, uh, I've been a good person, I've come back as a, as a good person. Another person's karma might be bad because he's done a lot of bad things. Mm -hmm. All right? So, maybe Hitler might come as a, a rat or something. Yes, because he's done a lot of bad things. That's, that's kind of what they would say. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. when he comes as a woman, Yes, a, 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 a rat. Mm. What is the best thing a rat has to do in order to become a man again? I've read different things about that. You see, that is the question you need to ask about that. I read that you go through the cycle of all the animals. Because because I really, I really, really, you, no, he means how do you increase yeah. from the rat to the next yeah. level? I don't know. I'm not the right person. It's reincarnation, though, isn't it? Worse than I'm not the right person. No, I mean, what he means, I think what he means is logically question it. I mean, if I just logically question oh, right. it, it doesn't really make sense. Wait, wait, no, no, you can argue that you, as an animal, you just automatically go and be an animal. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I get that. No, no, but how do you go? What he means is how do you go from the rat to the next level? What do you do right to increase? How many times does he say he doesn't know? He has said multiple times now, he's not the right person to ask this question, he does not know. He's just repeating something that he's read or heard, and that's it. He's not defending it. Yeah. Next cycle, how do you become a man? Exactly. Yeah, so that's, that's the kind of logical no, questioning. No, no, that's fair, that's fair, but that's the kind of logical questioning that he would do. Yeah, but, but then someone could just argue to that, oh, well, if you're an animal, you don't have to do anything, you just you die, 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 die. So you, until you get a human again, then it counts. How do you, but how do you increase? It doesn't make sense. Bro, I just get the answer. Go on, you just die as a rat. How do you, yeah. how did you get crossed over <laughs> so, I don't know. Probably, so, how are you, so how are you different from all the other rats then? If you're just going to be a rat, everyone will become a rat. Everyone will become a rat and become a human again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it's not just, and then when you're human, it counts again. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, honestly, it's not quite worth I mean, they, they, they laugh, okay, but they're unable to conceptualize or entertain a hypothetical. It's, it's amazing how the Islam virus stops you from thinking rationally and stops you from applying any kind of critical thinking or being able to. Yeah, just, just have a hypothesis and then check it from different angles. I don't know why they can't do that. To me, it's something that doesn't, it, it probably is not going to serve justice yeah. to an individual who has done a lot of evil, but a lot of evil. That's the thing, they don't really feel like all their souls together make up God. I mean, that's effectively what it is. So there is no separate God. That's the whole thing, right? So all the souls make up God? Yeah, it's like all the souls are a reflection of the universal consciousness. That's what they, that's how they say. Yeah, that's what the Bhagavad Gita says. That's what it says. How is that different from pantheism? God is a... Pantheism? Uh, no, okay. It's not really. It's not different. 
So, so basically, so what is down the toilet could be God? Yeah. What it could be the Wait, more spiritual well, thing could be God? Everyone believes God. Right in the toilet. No, but hang on. Everyone believes God is everywhere anyway. Well, most of us believe that. Muslims. Muslims don't. You don't believe God is everywhere? Really? Is God in hell? No, I mean, God is in the physical world. He has control over everything. Hang on. In Islam, God has knowledge of everything. So he knows what it's like to have gay sex and he knows what it's like in hell. So he must have experienced both, otherwise he doesn't know this. This is what knowledge is. Right? So I, I don't know why they're trying to argue this point. You know that is the worst thing to say only in the physical world because the heavens and the hell is not in the physical world. Okay. How does he know that? Where does this guy have the certainty? Where does he get that from? What, what kind of methodology has he employed to, to establish that heaven and hell are not on earth? Uh, how has he... Uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't understand why he can say these things when he can't possibly have any knowledge of either. Okay, so for anyone who says God is not in heaven, in heaven... So you don't believe God is omnipresent? Well, not in the sense that that, that, is that he exists. Oh, yeah, God says in the Quran that he's closer to you than your jagged away. Okay, that means he's everywhere. <laughs> so he's just contradicting himself because if he is closer in every single human to every single human's jugular vein, that means he's all over the planet. Okay, and we don't know how many humans or how many beings, the creatures there are in this universe. So, yes, it's very feasible that this God should then be everywhere if the Quran is right. The question people ask is how is that possible if God is not everywhere? It's basically by his knowledge, his knowledge transcends everything. Yeah. Every uh, transcends, here's the magic word. If you don't know what to say, say it transcends everything. What does it mean, his knowledge transcends everything? Knowledge cannot transcend. I, I, I don't know why they think this is such a powerful argument when it's just mindless babble. Everything that you know of, everything, everything that is physical, non-physical, it transcends everything. But by knowledge, he knows everything. He knows what is in the deepest so he needs to be everywhere to know everything. Yes, yeah, right. Omnipresent. Omnipresent. Not, not only in any other. Yeah, omnipresent. Because they see that it's all an illusion, anyway. So of course, God is everywhere. But well, then you're telling me God is an illusion. Honestly, no, 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 no. It means the world, the physical world, is an illusion. Right? The physical world is an illusion. Everything in the world. So if God is everywhere. And if everything is illusion, yeah, about the toilet, yeah, I, know, I know what you're saying. That's, that's, that's not what you mean by that, obviously. Are you saying God is not in the physical world? God is everywhere. He said that God is present everywhere. Exactly. Which means the physical world. Yeah. Okay. So, and if the physical world is an illusion, then God is an illusion. In the physical world, God exists also outside. But you said that's what they said. If he, in this world, because God his is presence is an illusion. No, 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 but then God is also. Uh, their souls make up God. The souls are a reflection of God. So. Before we speculate on something. No, no, no. no. It, makes, it makes logical sense to me. If everything that you see in the physical because world. Because God is not just contained within the physical world. That's not what they're saying. Then, then God's existence in the physical world is an illusion. It's not God is physical as an object. No, that's right. No, I didn't say God is physical as an right, object. Yeah. I'm saying if, if everything in the physical world is an illusion, then God's existence in the physical world is an illusion. So God doesn't exist in the physical world. God, God exists part of the illusion. You don't, you don't you see it. Exactly. When he's a part of an illusion, that part is an illusion, which is not God doesn't he exist. He doesn't in the physical understand world. So your soul it. thinks it's in the physical world around it, but that's not what's real. What's real is conscious. So when they say God is in the physical world, they don't mean God is in part of that illusion. It means that when you, you know, everything has a, a sort of a nature of God inside it. That's what they're trying to say with it. You know, basically what you're trying to say. You're saying that everything you can see and perceive and touch and feel is an illusion. Yeah, but real. what is spiritual which you cannot see, perceive and, and feel, that is not an illusion. You flipped it completely the other way around to what the real world is. What? Have you realized that? That's exactly what you've done. You no, it's the real a world into something that is an illusion and the, the spiritual world into something that is a real existence, which really does exist, not an illusion. That's what they're saying. That's the irony. That's the biggest irony I've ever because, because, because what they're getting at is... So what far you have been saying all this is an illusion. That world which you don't see is not an illusion. Are you a good illusion? <laughs> It might be like the Matrix. Yeah. I mean, that's the closest, honestly, the Matrix is the closest idea to life. Yeah, and but now, yes. Even in the Matrix, yeah, even in the Matrix, even in the Matrix. So that's why enlightenment would be, they'd wake up out of the Matrix. But anyway, I think it's the same. It's like you opening the spiritual eyes. We say this, I mean, it's the same in Islam, the same in all the religions. Because you see, religion, when you talk about religions, you need to take into account the physical and the spiritual, the spiritual world. You need to take into account the testimony of God and the testimony of the people that we believe to be from God. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. so this is what religion is. There is part, part faith and there is part which you think about your common sense and your rationality as well. It's, it's basically both. It's not one devoid of the other. You need to have both. You need but to be, can be in the real world and also at the same time experience the spirituality. Islam doesn't free you from either one. In fact, Islam wants you to stay real in this real world. Behave well with your parents.
your children, your, your neighbors, your surroundings, treat your environment well. This is all to do with the physical world. You do not give us from the physical world. You take, you take into account that this is part and parcel of who I am. Oh my. And this is the problem. What, what he's describing is exactly this, this, uh, this dichotomy because you have two different sides in Islam. You have the, um, you know, the heaven side and you have the earth side. And this is the split in Islam where there's a couple of sentences about heaven and, and what you need to do and blah, 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 and what it's like there. But the majority of, this, of, the, of, the, of the rules are for here. You don't, you don't get told what happens in heaven. Um, there's one or two snippets, but here it's very detailed. Who, who you're allowed to make love to in what position? This is being determined by Islam for here. Whom you're allowed to marry for how long? With, by paying how much? This is determined here on, on this planet. And this is the political ideology of Islam. And this is the majority. And this is the problem that we have. That the Islam does, that this political Islam that we have does not fit into the 21st century. And this is exactly what he is just saying. That you have all these like, like inheritance laws which d don't add up, which are totally wrong. And they are also, from, from a moral point of view, they are wrong. So all, all these, these this, this political ideology, Islam, all these rules contained therein don't fit into the 21st century. And that is why we have this huge problem with Sharia and this problem with Islam. My viewpoint is, yeah, I, I exist very much in the school. It's my personal view. But it's interesting to hear different ideas. When you see the most important thing, this world that we live in is temporary. It's going to end one day. We're going to die one day. Every soul is going to kiss that one. Everyone dies, yeah. Yes. You know, and this is what I'm saying. What happens after that? For me personally, I'm okay with dying and ceasing to exist. Do you believe in uh, reincarnation? No, you don't? So you think you have a purpose? Do you believe there's a purpose in life? To live what? Well, to treat life as very precious. To live the best life I can. You know best for someone is not the best for someone else? It's subjective? So what do you mean by live best? For example, do you drink alcohol? Yes. Yes? You think that's good? I think it's a purpose. Really? Is it the best? Amen. You just said you live your life Amen. to the best of your ability. Do you think drinking alcohol is the best yeah, thing to do? What does drinking alcohol have to do with anything? Over abuse, over doing, over anything. As soon as you abuse it, anything, I think anything, is, is bad for you. So it doesn't matter what you take. I can't think of anything from the top of my head that um, it can be too much of. Well, if you abuse it. So I, I don't understand what his point is. If somebody like, like me, I drink a glass of champagne for New Year's Eve and on a birthday or something. Now, am I abusing alcohol? No, I think it's okay. If I drink an occasional glass of champagne, like two a year, I don't think that's bad. There's nothing wrong with that. So that is to my best of my ability to fit in social life, in society, my environment, my surroundings, and I'm free to do either. The Muslim is not. This is always the problem. It's the best thing you mentioned everything else. It's not a good thing. It's one of the best things. I don't really see it that way. So why? This is for joy. Why would you drink alcohol? For joy. Yeah, but joy. You can, you can play. You can watch cartoons or you can play with the kids. Or... I do that. I do that too. <laughs> exactly. But you see, what you're doing with alcohol. So what we're seeing is this absolutism, where you, some, something in the Quran mentions that you know it's better if you avoid something that covers your brain. Now immediately they go from covering your brain into alcohol. And then from avoiding something that covers your brain, it gets, um, alcohol is prohibited, even though it doesn't say this in the Quran. It only says this in the Hadith somewhere. So what, what is wrong with having two glasses of champagne per year? Absolutely nothing. So if I self-indulge drinking two glasses of champagne by fitting into society and being part of the group and doing something that is absolutely not harmful, what is the point? Why, why should I be so absolute? Why should I be so dogmatic and say I'm not allowed to do that the way that a Muslim is? Like a woman in, as, as a non-Muslim is allowed to put on a headscarf whenever she feels like it, if she wants to. But a woman in Islam is not allowed to take it off. This is the problem. And this is something that, that these people don't understand. They're saying, yeah, but now we're wearing a mask because of um, this, this, uh, this virus, coronavirus. Yeah, but when this is finished, we're able to take the mask off. A woman is not able to take her mask off. She has to stay behind that mask. And now we all know how uncomfortable it is 
to wear these masks, how difficult it is to talk, to speak, to walk, that it feels so uncomfortable to be wearing this mask. And now we all know what it is like and we still expect Muslim women well, if you realize to wear it. it's harming your body, it's harming your yeah, liver, for example. I, 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 that's okay. Do you think at the expense of joy that is worth it? For at the expense of your health, it well, is worth having that joy? I, I decide to drink an amount that I think is acceptable by my body, and I'm okay with that. See, every, every alcoholic said that at one point. Well, the most we, live in we live in a city that has air pollution. Do you know what's the most good death in the world? The city has air pollution. Is that good for us? You're not doing that to yourself. That's not something you're doing voluntarily. When you when you go to the supermarket and you pay for your drink and you drink it, yes, I don't go to the supermarket and buy pollution, do I? No, but you choose to live here. Yeah, but look, when I live here, some people can't afford to move. What do you want me to do? Live in a dome? If you go to the mountains, which is free from pollution? It's getting tired. You can go to the mountains. Go to the mountains. I think there's pollution even on the Everest. People climb on the mountains. You see all the dirt on the The fact is, not everyone can move, though. No, everyone can move. That's not forceful. So what I'm trying to say is, when you're drinking apple, that's your choice. Simple. Simple. But when you're living somewhere, yeah, it's not like let's say I don't agree with the pollution here. I can't just up and go, can I? It's not simple as that. If I could, maybe I would. The fact that maybe I would. Maybe I would. But the fact definitely. No, no. Due to reasons. Yes. No, no. Children's so tools. You, you no, 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 no. That's, that's harming your body, though, and you're drinking it. Exactly. When I, make... I don't see this harming my body. It's really? not harming so the body. Just because you turn a blind eye to the damage it does to the body doesn't mean the damage is going to go away. Because, 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 that's true. At a time, look, but I told you, I, I've accepted the amount of drink. I'm okay with that. No, but you said, look, when you said, I smoke shishas. You know, that harms my body. You know why I asked you about alcohol? Shishas. Yeah, which one was that? Just clarify. Shisha, shisha. You know why I asked you about alcohol? Because you said you live your life to the best of your Yes. Yes. To me, drinking alcohol. Is not part of the best so of my that's difference in opinion. Do you think you, you said it yourself? Most of the most most of the most 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 I don't know. I don't know if that's true. Right. Come on, even the Quran says there's some benefit. What the hell is your problem? I don't get it. Why, why is he harping on on this? It's irrational. Okay, so, 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 can I just, sorry. It's basically the harm done from consuming alcohol. For example, so. Let me get this straight. A God creates human beings, teaches human beings how to take the fruit it created into alcohol, teaches human beings how to ferment fruit, make alcohol, drink, consume alcohol, and then says, you're not allowed to drink the alcohol that I've just taught you to make because it's bad for you and that is why I created it. There's a whole bloody cloud of alcohol floating around in space. Why would a God take time to create alcohol in abundance and then say, well, you're not allowed to take it? You're not allowed to use it. You're not allowed to in any way in, use alcohol. And, and then suddenly it, it comes out, well, actually you can clean your hands with it and disinfect your hands with it so that you are you know, not, not affected by the coronavirus. So there is some benefit, definitely, in using alcohol and not actually drinking it. Ah, yes. Do you know the? Do you, do you know the NHS revenue? The NHS revenue, yeah. the majority of it goes into treating alcoholic-related cases, which impact directly or indirectly so, by alcohol. So, do you think most people who drink alcohol are going to end up needing hospital treatment because of it? That's no, I'm not saying absolute that. I'm saying bullshit. people who drink alcohol, they can knock someone down. They can basically they can. harm their family. Hear me? Not that they will. Well, maybe you should go out on Saturday night and see how, what happens. That's not me. I didn't say it was you. Why did you personally? Well, no, because because you asked me. Yeah, I asked you, well, but you already admitted it, it harms your body. So I'm okay with yeah. that. And if you're okay with that, that's fine. There we go. Well, there you go. If you're okay with harming your body deliberately. That's your project, not mine. But what, what I'm saying is that, that, that if anyone tells me that this is the way I live my life to the best of my ability, I wouldn't include alcohol in that's, 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 that's fine, that's different to me. But you wouldn't either. What? Unless you're telling me that to the best of your ability includes alcohol. I don't, I don't think of it that way. Why? Because alcohol... you want to turn a blind, blind eye to something that is wrong. You haven't established that it's wrong. So, so this is what I'm saying. If you're thinking consistently yeah. about what is good for you as a human being, yes? I don't. Well, you should. Because I, I decide, I, I know what you're trying to say. I'm not that strict about it. No, it's not about That's basically what I'm saying. It's about how you treat your body, which has a right over you. Your body... It's my body. Yeah, I know, but you, you, have, a, you have a right. Yeah. You have a right. Your body, you you said you're the best body has a right over you. Yeah. You're saying you're not part of the best, right? Like, so the best okay. you can. Okay. So what I'm saying is that this is something. Look, would you want your kids to have alcohol? Yeah. Would you want your children to have alcohol? After certain age, I'm not thinking. No, no. When they, what, what age is that? 14, 16. It's illegal. I started drinking when I was 16. It's illegal. It's okay. 18. No, if you go to a pub, you can have it with dinner. Pub, you can have it with dinner. With your, yeah. with your mom and dad? Yeah. But not by yourself. Okay. So it's illegal by yourself. Why do you think the government imposes that? <laughs> 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 
Oh my. Why is it why are you saying your body? If it does damage to your body, it's okay. It shouldn't do damage to the chip. Wait, what do damage? And it does damage to your skin. But just because you turn 18, it doesn't mean it stops damaging your body. It does damage your body. The band is there because at that, at that point in time. I, I, I've chosen what I'm okay. Well, he does. But what I'm saying, it's not a question to you as an individual. When I say I want to live my life the best of my ability. Come on, I, I don't know why this is happening, but this is this is idiotic, really. Wearing wearing the niqab or wearing a burqa damages your body more than drinking a glass of champagne for New Year's. Okay, so why is it, is that really the only argument a Muslim have has to to make others feel bad about their not being a Muslim, or does it mean that the Muslims' only thing is not to drink alcohol? Doesn't he have any better arguments? Why, why isn't he telling him about the positive effects of Islam, where one of them is reduction of alcohol intake? And I agree with that. That's a good thing. But it is one of the items that he could be telling him about. It's not worth going on and on for hours about, you know, lies about the the. I don't know the revenue of the NHS on on um, that alcohol is the biggest killer. That's nonsense. Stop doing that. It's childish. It's ridiculous. Everybody is seeing through it. It's. Re it's uh, I get to choose what that means. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. That's subjective. Yes. 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 So, so, for example, if somebody just chosen to be a Muslim, that's a subjective choice. No. You, I know you won't say that, but it is. No, no, wait. But when you say it's a subjective choice, me personally, yes, I chose it yes. based on the rationality of the religion that I believe. And I'm going to drink a little bit of alcohol based on the rationality. The rationality of religion, come on, there is nothing rational about being a Muslim. Rational means that you are using your brain without emotion, without feelings or sensations or anything like that. Rational means that you are using cold, hard facts data, you're using reasoning, this whole process of exactly looking at the information, at the available options, and then making a decision. There is nothing rational about Islam. There is nothing rational about a God. Undetectable, invisible, not there, without any visible effects, nothing that you can measure, nothing. There is no data, no facts, no information about this God other than just some old book. And you, you say that, look, if you harm your body, you have no problem with that. You might be harming your mind by being a Muslim. Uh, give me an example. Wait, wait, that's, you made a, because, because you made a statement, claim, you need to back it up. I can back up the alcohol claim, you back up your claim. Well, maybe you might be happier as a person if you didn't believe it. Well, actually, I'm happier now. I'm maybe happy you alcohol. You see, your happiness is damaging your body. You said it damages my mind. Your you happiness might be damaging your mind. You might be minded You might not have meditation. Okay. Okay. Know 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 yes, Islam virus is damaging to your brain. It is. <laughs> That's the way that it is. You I mean, we can see it here again. And he says, you're, now you've made a claim, bring your evidence. The evidence is right here. He cannot think clearly. He, can, he doesn't have any, any kind of critical thinking. He doesn't have rational thinking. He doesn't have any kind of logical or whatever reasoning. What else is there? That's exactly what the Islam virus does to your brain. That you are in a bubble where everything else bounces off you. So as soon as anybody claims um, that, that there are things that you are not able to do, or as soon as you, the Muslim, is being asked to, to explain something in the Quran or in the, in, the, in the Islamic teachings, you can't do that. Then you start getting violent. That is exactly what we're talking about. What are you doing now? What are you doing now? Are you doing now? No, in order to score points, you're speculating about my mind. You don't know my mind, but I know that the doctors unanimously agree that alcohol damages your liver. But I can speak to a group of people who are not Muslim. Yeah, you're still on alcohol. Being a Muslim means your intellectual development. You're stunting your intellectual development. You know many of the Muslims are scientists? Many of the Muslims are as well. I'm not saying no, but you're saying you're basically hindering yourself in this advancement. What? The, the, you see, when Europe was in the Dark Ages, the Muslims had the Golden Age. No, this is, this is nonsense. This has been refuted. It, come on, guys, don't you know anything? There is nothing. Okay, there's one exception, but otherwise there is not a single Muslim who has ever discovered or, or invented anything significant. Never. There's, there's only one guy in 1999, 1999, and he got the Nobel Prize in chemistry, and he's dead. And that was in the US, by the way. So nothing. There was no golden age. This is a myth. This is a legend. This is propaganda to make people feel good about themselves. It's not true. Stop repeating this nonsense. My goodness, I mean, he, he wouldn't last 10 seconds with me. 
And they based it on the Quran. They based the no, they based absolutely nothing on the Quran. There is nothing in the Quran. There's not a single statement that is correct. Nothing. So what are you telling me? Everything in the Quran, be it mountains, be it seas, be it anything that it says, it is wrong. It is factually incorrect. And I have demonstrated this over and over and again and again. But Muslims will not believe it. They will always tell me, there's no mistake in the Quran. What the hell does this... I've shown this, I've demonstrated that. What, what, what can I do? What if a Muslim is confronted, what is going on in the brain if he sees the facts? Why can't he accept the facts and say, oops, we have a problem here. I need to rethink this. Why doesn't he do it? Why does he automatically fall back into, there's no mistake in the Quran, if he's presented with a mistake in the Quran? So I don't understand what he's saying. Why is he going into the golden age, which never actually happened? Scientific advancement on motivation from the Quran. My, so we are not hindering all my... No, but my point of view is, I'm not, I'm not any religion. I didn't say you were. No, no, but I'm, I'm saying not, you made a statement no, 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 that no, you're mine. Let me explain why. Let me explain why. Because I don't want to belong to any fixed social... You already do. You're right, you're right, you're right, you're right, I do. Exactly. You're right, you're right, I do. But there's no label. That's only semantics. Whether you give it a label... That's, that's better than having labels for me, anyway. Yeah, but you see, what you're doing now is like, you're basically... Mono, oh, sorry, you're somehow saying that labels is what the whole discussion is. It's, not, it's about the ideology. What you believe in. The ideology that you have includes from the community. You've chosen to be a Muslim, so you're able to think very much in that perspective. But it automatically means you're not going to delve into other perspectives as much. How do you know? How do you think I know about Christianity? You and know, about Hinduism? About Buddhism. And about Hinduism? And Buddhism? You said you read a little bit. You know, you have you been trying meditating? Have you been to a meditation retreat? Have you really gone to with that? To me, prayer five times a day is meditation. Well, it's the same thing. It's the same It's something that is there. We call it. We call it. You know what I'm saying? I'll admit, I haven't prayed five times a day. But I have prayed. It's the same argument. Yeah, but it's the same argument. You say you have to meditate again and pray. And by the way, in order to know the religion, I don't have to practice that religion. Do I? I need to study about it. I don't need to practice it. For example, I know that there's many Satanists here. I don't need to become a Satanist to understand the religion. Anyway, see what I mean? Okay, no, no, but the point, let's go back to the point just before, because that's what we were talking about. You were saying, I, I want to live the best life, I'm drinking alcohol, bad and body, and I said, I'm making a choice. Right? But you see, your choice is not ethical or moral. What you're saying is something at point, you're enjoying morality, it. Morality is subjective. Ethics are also subjective. So you don't think there's subjective morality at all? There isn't. There isn't? No, there isn't. Okay. Well, that's, that's why my whole universe, I'm thinking about the universe, what happens to this planet, it doesn't ultimately matter. So then how do human beings uh, adopt their morals? Or ethics? If there's no such thing as subjective morality? What, what are you going to use as a yardstick? To say something is moral or and ethical or not? How are you going to see it? Because you see, at one point in time, we, we seem to do it as a combination of what we feel, love, fear, and a combination, and that combined with having to live next to each other with each other. Come on, ten seconds and his history. I, d I don't know why. The, I I could make a better case for Islam than these guys could. Why is it that after a thousand years of Islamic scholarship, they are not able to present anything better than than this? This, this drivel. What is this? Is there nothing better? This is frustrating. But if that was the case, you know, there were people who basically would go to another country and say, we basically are going to make them slaves and make, make them disciplined into being human beings, how to behave and look like human beings, instead of living like savages, with bones through their nose or something like that. I've heard statements like that. At that point in time, their culture and their society, their society believe that they are doing a favor yes. to these savages yes. by basically enslaving them yes. and treating them in a way that where they would then become civilized people or eventually would do. And see, today, so you think, today we don't see yeah, I know, but you see, at that point, what I'm saying is that if you were living in that time, and you would basically be consistent with what you believe in, you would say, because of society, because everybody else thinks this way, and this is something morally right for me to leave my country, go to another country, and slave those people, colonize them, their wealth and their people, and bring them to civilization. You would be thinking like that. If you're going to just be based on this subjective morality. No, 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 I said part of it was how we decide to live with each other. Part of it is our inner morality that all we have. All that is subjective. What is good for you, for example, you said alcohol is good for you, and then the person will say alcohol I didn't say it was good for you. Well, you said you enjoy it. I do enjoy it. Would you, would you actually do something that you don't enjoy? Nobody would do something they don't enjoy. There you go, you drink alcohol. Because but you enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. uh, what I'm saying is that why are people so stupid? There's a difference between enjoying something and discussing whether it's good for you. It is different. 
And if something is moral, it doesn't mean that it's moral for somebody else. Morality is subjective. There are some things which are con everybody agrees that this is immoral. Sure. Do you want to call this objective? Sure, you can do that. Objective merely means that there is nobody that can have any of, of differing opinion. Okay, great. So we have that. But not everything in morality is objective. Everything except for the 2% the of the cases is subjective. And that's how easy it is. And he is no different. The Quran doesn't prohibit you from eating human flesh, but he doesn't. Why not? Why does he have this, this moral thing about not eating other humans? It's not in the Quran. So he has the same moral, I don't know, dislike that I have. Now, where does, where does he get it? Where do I get it? The same place. It's evolution and society. That's all it is. Another person would say that is bad because it harms the body. That's their choice. It's not about choice. I'm telling you what is good no, and no, bad. That's their choice not to have it themselves. Oh, yeah, I'm, saying, I, I, yeah, I'm yeah. saying it's subjective in the sense yeah, okay. that what you think, yes. your morals are right, it's not the same as another individual. So how are you going to create harmony in the society? Everybody has a subjective view. Yeah, because we accept that people will make different choices about something that might harm their body, and we're okay with that, which is how we operate. No, but that's what I'm saying. How do you create? I'll tell you what. A society at one point in time, by the way, do you think incest is right or moral or immoral? What if a society is there who basically think that it's okay to have... Uh, Another point, incest is built into Islam. Okay, I, I, I condemn incest. I, I don't think it's a good thing, but I don't think it should be criminalized. But in incest, in Islam, incest is built in. You are allowed to marry your first cousin. That is incest. And that is built in. There's nothing that you can do about it. In, in Islam, it's very clear. The Quran tells you whom you are not allowed to marry. The cousin is not there. The grandmother is not there. So you're allowed to have sex with your own grandmother. And come on, having sex and marrying your own daughter-in-law. Excuse me, okay? My moral values are on a much higher level because I don't do things because I'm afraid of the punishment by some invisible God. And I don't do good things which I consider to be good or that other people consider to be good because I'm getting a reward for it. I have altruism. I have things that I do because of my altruistic streak, because I'm, I have empathy. You don't know about these things. Sex with their dad or their mother or something. And the majority of them are okay with that. They enjoy they say, it. Look, this is consensual between us two adults. So, and you so shouldn't, what's, you shouldn't what's the question? What's the question? Should I, should I condemn them or should I condemn them? That's the question. What would I do to them? Yeah, no, no, what would you say? Would you condemn them? You won't get it. Good place. Because you said, let good, them do good, what good, they good. want. It's their choice. I would say I don't agree with it, but it's not my place to stop them doing it. So you wouldn't condemn them? If it's like a, they've been doing that for hundreds of years, would I condemn them? To condemn, what do you mean condemn means to say that's evil or something? If you consider something to be evil or bad or unethical or immoral, you condemn it. That's common, that's common sense, isn't it? He should, he should ask this guy, do you condemn any human being, any man, who performs any sexual act on a nine-year-old girl? And then see his reaction. It shows you, it shows you acknowledge that thing is something evil or bad. I would say it's bad. Just bad? You wouldn't condemn it? No, that's me condemning it. I would say it's bad. So you would condemn it? Yeah, I would. Yeah. Okay. What if they continue even with your condemnation? Would you then force them to stop what they're doing? No, I can't force them. What if they're harming the other societies? What if the children that are being born are handicapped? Uh, who? They're children. handicapped, the children. Handicapped? Yeah. So it depends, it depends on the situation? I just give you the situation. No, but it depends if it's like another country, and, you know, you know what I mean? A society like, within this country. Let's say this country. There's a small hamlet somewhere where they practice incest. Would yeah, the law, would, you know why they have a law against incest in this country? I, for I, the same reason. Because it's not, it doesn't just stop at condemnation. I, I stop it goes that. to you, it goes for you as a society to stop that act, which is wrong physically. I, I would want to stop that, yeah. You would want to stop it? Yeah, I would. Yeah. You see what you have just done? Earlier you were saying that you would only consider it wrong. Now you have taken two steps forward. You have not only acknowledged that it is wrong and you condemn it, but you are even willing to say that you should stop it physically. But that's what you said. It's a small group of people in this society doing that. You know, everything starts with small. Uh, Every ideology the problem comes. Is the ideology that, that starts out with small. All your rules come from some divine revelation. No, no. Look, Whereas my, my, I'm talking about let's have rules that we all collectively agree on. So we I will never collectively agree. That's my that's point. So true. Yeah. That is what subjectivity we, is all we about. We collectively agree on all kinds of stuff today. That's friend, how we are able to live peacefully. My friend, we it. cannot even agree simple, basic we things. Well, we do, some don't. We just simple, basic things. Do you really think everyone agrees with that? Yes. Why did they break the uh, red line and go to it? Why did they do that? They get put in jail. Exactly my point. You know, if there was no law that they did not go to jail, and even if you had the traffic lights, they won't care about it. 
Because so you think you need... I'm not sure about that. No, no, you need, me by what, what I'm saying is that you need some sort of legislation which includes physical punishment. If someone breaks a law, yes. you cannot just say, I, I condemn this as good or I condemn this as bad and stop that. No. Yeah, but then that, that legislation we figure out collectively instead of having it divinely given to us. You know, most of the legislations in this country, they come from religious books. What's wrong with secular? Uh, What's wrong with secular? Still do. Still, with secular? Do. still do. Trust me, still do. Many of the laws in there, many of the laws in there are still coming from a religious background. No, no. Yeah. The laws today, like environmental regulation, that's not coming from the Bible. You know, laws like divorce, laws like They're not coming from laws, religious laws to religious property, law, even the law to vote for women did not come more than 100 years from today. I'm not disagreeing with that, but that's not how we operate today. That's, the point. that's what I'm saying. This is something that you go by child and error. The Quran clearly says that a man is a degree above a woman. This is not something that we implement today in a secular society. So we do not take this law from a religious text. We have evolved. We have gone away from taking women as objects, from seeing women as just incubators. Islam has not. And this is progress. This is what human society does. It progresses. It gets better in some ways. In some ways it also gets worse, I agree. But in this case, it is definitely better that everybody has equal human rights. I'm not saying they are physically identical and they have the same chores and the same abilities. I'm saying they have the same human rights. That is the difference. And in Islam, this will never be the case because in the Quran, it very clearly states that a man is above a woman and the man is the caretaker of the woman. A woman inherits half. She is half of a man. And this will not change unless you change the Quran. What is better than that? Why can't you let the one who basically created you to legislate what is right and wrong? Right, instead of you, instead of you going... The Muslims are the Buddhists. Why didn't you study both and you didn't make up your mind? That's what people do. Yeah. Have you studied Islam? No, no, but no, that's, I like you said that. That's what people do. So what, what, what you just said is really key. I study both and I make up my mind based on which one appeals to me. In other words, there's no objective one. Hold on, hold on. When you say, when you say what appeals to me, yeah. you should do that without any bias. No one can do that. Well, you should. No one, you should try your best. Biased. Everyone's biased? No, that, I agree. There's some bias somewhere. Yeah. But you know there are many people who basically completely oppose Islam. And then when they read it with the context of the Quran, I know, I know. they came, they became a Muslim. So to me, they did not have a bias to become a Muslim. They came through the intellectual reasoning. And that is what I expect you that, to do. That means nothing to me because there are people who went intellectually to Christianity, to atheism, to all kinds, right? I didn't say they did. You know, but anyone, anyone who says that I'm going to just do as I please in this life, you can't do that. Yeah, you can't do that. You can't yeah. do that. Exactly and, and if you're sincerely looking for something as an ideology, you cannot bring your biases and your basically inconsistent... Uh, people do. People always do. Try to be as sincere with yourself as possible. You can try, but the point you made was key. Ultimately, you choose something that already speaks to what you feel on the inside. That's why people become Muslims, Christians, atheists, whatever, right? That's why not everyone becomes one thing, because people are different. That's why everyone doesn't need, agree. Which is why I need a society where we collectively agree on compromise. We don't. That's what I'm yes. telling you. We don't. Sometimes we do. We don't. Okay, I'll tell you what. When, no, collect, when you say collectively, I'll tell you what. The only In way, way you can have what you're having is if everyone follows the same rule. It, yes, all humans are different. And the thing is, different people react to different things. And where people are gullible and, and just will believe anything, there are other people who are skeptics. Now, I'm, I'm a skeptic. I don't easily believe stuff. We're all going to be Muslims. No, 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 no. Needed. Islam doesn't say you should only be, be Muslim, even if you are a non-Muslim. In Muslim country, a non-Muslim can behave like a non-Muslim as long as he doesn't break the rules. And the rules are basically very similar to what rules you have in this country. No, do they're not. Do not murder. Yes, there might be no gambling, which might be valid or legal in this country. Yes, so you have certain things which harm the society. Like I told you earlier, Islam prohibits things which are bad for you as an individual and as a society. It's fine, man. But the, the original question, you, you're just, you can answer why we should all be, I guess, living in an Islamic rule-based society. No, I'm saying you live according to what God has legislated. The, the reason said, this is your claim. Yeah. There's no God here, so they have some ideas. So you this one. Yeah, but you see, and you, you can pick which one. Yeah, I told you. you, you right. I did tell you that. Great. Okay. This this is very frustrating. Highly frustrating to see this this. Uh, this squirming and, and, and this ir irrational running around and not really bringing any arguments. So all in all, this was highly frustrating, not very useful. And I hope that the level somehow increases that they're going to do a little bit better in the future. All right. See you next time. Bye.